Coyote Fuel, and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at John chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Here is our rubric. Let's go ahead and get started. Metatauta ap elfen ho Jesus peron tes thalases tes galalaias tes teberiados e colufei de autoi oclos polus hoti ethe orun ta semea ha epoie epton asthenun ton aneth anelfen de esto oros e Jesus kai e kei e katheto Metaton mafeton autu. En de engus ta pasca he eorte ton judaion. Actually, we're going through verse 4. I missed that. Uh, well, uh, let's go ahead and get started on this new chapter. We begin with, the, I think, the same prepositional phrase that we had at the beginning of chapter 5. Meta taking the accusative, showing us time and plural neuter referring to the previous events events uh, after these things up elfen note that we have the aorist stem from erkomai with epsilon nu for the third person singular aorist active indicative and since we have the prepositional prefix apo that means he's going away from so after these things jesus went from or went is from right yeah, I think it's from, so he went away, peron, then peron is a unusual uh, preposition taking the genitive. It's not natural for it to be the, to be a preposition. I'm not sure what it comes from, but uh, that's something pretty easy to look up. Uh, peron plus genitive, tastas, thalases, eta sigma, genitive, singular, feminine, across the sea. So where, I'm not sure where he was previously. You know, he, as, as we see, he's in the, the vicinity of Galilee, so he's gone across to the other side. Uh, Tes Galileas, Alpha Sigma, the article telling us that Galilee is also feminine. Same form as Thalases. And then Tes Tiberiados is just giving us the alternate name for this same location. You have what the Romans called it, and you have the, what the locals called it. And Tiberius, as you can also see, with, because of the Eta, is also feminine even though we got the Omicron Sigma genitive, that being a third declension genitive. Into verse 2, then, we find our verb immediately, ekolutei. So you have an epsilon iota ending. Our stem ends in the theta, because this is akolutheo. So we have a conjunction, not a conjunction, a contract verb we can tell because of the acute accent here. If it were not contract, then it would want to jump all the way over this Omicron. So what this epsilon iota is, is actually going to be epsilon and an epsilon contracted. Why just the epsilon? Well, take a look at the front of the verb, and we have this eta here. The vowel should be an alpha, but since we have an eta, we know that's a contraction of, uh, almost sort of backwards, uh, epsilon and alpha for a past tense equaling eta. So the third person singular of the present stem that has a augmenting vowel at the beginning is going to be imperfect, just the simple epsilon. So these two together equal that short diphthong. So this means to follow, and it takes the dative, and I don't have anywhere to write <laughs> the actual form, but it is imperfect. Third person, senior singular, active, really crowded in here, indicative, plus dative, which we see here with the sub iota, singular, masculine, referring back to Jesus. And then the subject of our verb, oklos, polus, polus modifying that, nominative, singular, masculine, a great crowd. Why were they doing that? Hoti, because etheorun, no, we've got another contraction here, not necessarily easily identifiable because of the accent, because omicron upsilon, I believe, when it precedes, a vowel becomes long, whereas when there is not a vowel, when it precedes a consonant in its own word, then it becomes long. And I, I could be misremembering that. So I think the, the accent is in the correct place, whether or not this were a contract verb. But this is uh, theoreo. So we got another epsilon contract. 
This one contracting with an Omicron for the same reason. We've got the augmenting valve at the beginning telling us that this is going to be imperfect. Uh, four, this would be on es, on es e, omen ete, on. So Omicron nu in the first person singular and Omicron nu in the third person plural are identical. But Jesus is not the one speaking. Instead, this is descriptive of what is, a, what is happening. So first person singular doesn't make sense. Third person plural does make sense. So we, we do have a singular crowd, but we have multiple people within the crowd. And when you're talking about something like a crowd, you can use both the singular verb and the plural verb. The singular for the unit and the plural for everyone in it, as is happening here. So, epsilon omicron equals omicron upsilon, the third person plural, imperfect, active, indicative. And this takes a accusative direct object, which we see with ta, se mea, because we have the alpha with the tau in the article. This is going to be an accusative plural neuter. The signs, what signs? Well, we have a relative pronoun here from hos, he, ho, matching in case, well, in, in number and gender for the object to which it refers. And in this case, it is also matching the case because it is operating as the object of this verb, et poie, epsilon iota. And we already know that this one is also a contract verb, poieo. It's another epsilon, so it's the same contraction as akulutheo. We've got the augmenting vowel on the front of poieo. This verb means to make, to create, to do. So I'm just going to pull... Yeah, just gonna pull this one down. I almost went to the wrong word. Prepositional phrase, which things he was doing epe ton asthenon, asthenun ton, sorry. Prepositional phrase closes here because it's the end of the verse, but more importantly because anelthen is a different version of the same verb. Prepositional phrases cannot have verbs in them. But asthenun ton is itself from a verb this is present stem right there with the om uh, Omicron Upsilon contracting vowels. This is, I, I forget what the contracting vowel is for this verb. Could be an alpha, could be an epsilon, it's probably an epsilon because we've got Omicron Upsilon again. And it would, whatever it is, would be contracting with the Omicron here with the addition of the new tau for the present participle, omega nu, matching this for genitive plural. Moving on into verse 3, on elfen, it's going to be the same form as this one above, so we don't need to parse it, but note that we've got a different uh, prepositional prefix than this. Rather than the apo we had here, we have ana now, so away from and up. So he went up, es tu urus, prepositional phrase closes there because Jesus is not part of it. Ace takes the accusative, singular, neuter, into the mountain, into the hill, at least in Colorado. <laughs> we would consider it no more than a hill, but in that, for that part of the world, it is a pretty big mountain. Jesus, nominative, our subject going on with ap elfen. Kai, ekei, and there, adverb, showing location. Ekatheto, our verbal ending is eto there. This comes from kathemai, so it's deponent. Got an augmenting vowel at the beginning, so this is main so to, third person singular. Imperfect again, interesting that we got a whole bunch of imperfects. Uh, nope, I already said deponent. And indicative. So I should probably pause to note why I translated this as those who were ill, putting this into the imperfect. I did that because with participles and with infinitives, you take them at the same time as the main verb if they are the present. You take them as one tense further forward if it's future. Well, you can't really do that with the participles, but you can for other things. Or you take it one further back if it's aorist or perfect participle. So we have imperfect here with epoye, 
So present tense is contemporaneous. He is doing this while they are being sick. And then because we know how things, how signs work with Jesus and the ill, they instantly cease to be so. All right, so was sitting down, meta prepositional phrase, taking the genitive, you can tell because the article and the own with matheton closes there because autu is not part of it, though autu as the genitive singular masculine referring to Jesus does own disciples who are plural men. And then into verse four, ain from a me. So we've got the third person singular present, not present, gosh. Imperfect, active, indicative verb of being. And this is a, I want to say ace, ain, amen. And then I can't remember what the second person plural or the third person plural are for the verb. And it's run into them so rarely. But anyway, uh, he was, or it was, it's going to be it. So we take a look ahead. Tapasca, engus. Upsilon sigma looks like it might be a personal ending, but that's actually incorrect. And instead, we have the adverb here, near, and then tapaska, ta could be nominative or accusative. Ain doesn't want an accusative. Instead, it will take a nominative, singular, and then this is neuter. The Passover was being near, he, eo, heorte. Eda, Eda, both of those are telling us that this is the nominative singular feminine. Ton, Eudion, this is just renaming what the Pascha is. So a Greek reader might read Pascha and go, eh, what is that? But if you say, he, he, or, uh, he, orte, then they know, ah, it's some sort of feast, some sort of festival for the Jews. And then Ton, Eudion, owning he, orte. So there's all of our text so far. Let's take a look at it in its own context. After these things, Jesus went away across the Sea of Galilee, that is, of Tiberias. And great crowd was following him, for they were watching the signs which he was doing to those who were ill. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there was sitting, and there was sitting with his disciples. And it was near the Passover, or and the Passover was near, the feast of the Jews. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I hope taking a look at this has been helpful for you, and I hope that you have a very good... I guess this is the day after Pentecost, isn't it? Well, very happy Monday of Pentecost. Farewell.